What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton and the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we finished up the Golden Apples house. We had some excellent puzzles, although really difficult, but excellent puzzles. And in this potentially very last episode of this series, we're going to enter the Puzzle Master's house, the house of Professor Layton himself. I'm really excited. I know these are going to be some really challenging puzzles. Haven't even looked at the titles yet. But, again, I really enjoyed the Golden Apples house, I really liked the Art Lover's house, and I liked most of the Inventors and Decorators' houses. They've been some really solid challenge puzzles, and I can only imagine what they've got in store for the Puzzle Master's house, you know, itself. So, Puzzle 133, Finish the Equation, sounds really exciting. 134, Land Disputes, and then 135, Royal Escape. Is that going to be like the ultimate princess escape block sliding puzzle? I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, test your wits against the hardest puzzles the professor has to offer. You have what it takes to solve them. Oh, we will do our best. Do give this puzzle your best try. Interesting, I think the background changes. Yeah, the background's been changing each time. I haven't even been paying much attention, but we're in the treasure room right now. That's exciting. Okay, finish the equation. Only 70 pick rats. Huh. Complete the equation by inserting the four numbered tiles into the correct slots. Oh, I love these types of... I love these types of um, math puzzles. Uh, there's like a really common one where it's like you take three numbers, uh, three of the same number, and you try to get them equal to six or equal to ten um, or, or that sort of thing. Uh, there's some really some really cool things you can do with that, like using four fours and yeah. It, if you have any questions about that or if you have any interest in it, reach out to me on Discord. I'd be more than happy to talk about it quite a bit. but. Nevertheless, we're trying to get 10 with these four numbers. Um, just looking at the numbers we have, you know, 3, 4, 7, and 8, we're eventually going to have to multiply something to get 10. Something times something is going to equal 10. Which is kind of odd because um, <laughs> we're going to have... We're going to have to create some factor of 10. Should have to be two or five, but that's not quite an option here. Which makes me think we're gonna be dealing with some decimals, potentially. So, so let's start by thinking about what types of fractions can we make? Oh, is it? No, not quite. I was going to say, so we can make, you know, 4 divided by 8 will give us, you know, halves. And if we were to do 3 minus 1 half, um, that would give us 2 and a half, but then we can multiply by 4 to get 10. But we won't quite have that, that ability, unfortunately. So that's obviously not the, the correct answer. Um... So what else are we going to want to do? Obviously, I should mention something that comes to mind here that, that is an absolute necessity is PEMDAS, or uh, bed mass, as it's taught in other places in the in the world. Um, in at least the US, it's PEMDAS, where it's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and then bed mass in other places where it's um, brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. And so that means this... Uh, Oh, I can't draw. Again, so the division within the parentheses, everything within the parentheses is going to take place, and then we're going to multiply it by the far right slot. And then within the parentheses, the division is going to take place first. So, so what types of numbers can we even create that are maybe, I guess, like good values? <laughs> um, realistically, only 8 and 4, I mean, 3 and 7 are prime, right? So they would make some odd odd fractions but with eight and four we can make either two or one half so the question is can we utilize two for example if we want to use three and seven elsewhere um not quite because if we have three minus two we'll end up with one which multiplied by seven will not be ten and then if we have 7 minus 2, we'll have 5, but multiply that by 3 because that's all that's left and we'll get 15. So that's not going to be the case. Um, so like I said, we're probably going to end up with some decimals. But 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. 
So now we say, okay, what if we do seven minus a half? That gives us six and a half times three. It's gonna be like 19 and a half. So that's obviously not 10. Three minus a half, two and a half. That's like what I mentioned before. If we had the four available, would be helpful, but is not going to be the case. So what I think we might want to do Hmm. So one other thing to consider now is because it's not going to be four and eight there is we're going to have some other odd, odd combination probably, but whatever we end up with in terms of a fraction when multiplied by whatever the last number is needs to add to needs to multiply to an integer value. So what's interesting is if we had something like three sevenths, right? If we multiply that by four, if we multiply by eight, if we multiply by three, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, most of the time, it's not going to end up dividing evenly. Because three and seven are prime and don't have as many factors. So it makes me think that we're going to be multiplying some something in fourths uh, by eight. And off the top of my head, one in one fourth is probably what we're looking at. Can we make that though, is the real question. If we add that there, using these, could we make one and a fourth or five fourths? And I don't think that's going to be the case. Because we either have seven minus three fourths or we have three minus, oh wait, three minus seven fourths will do it. That'll do it. Um, seven fourths is, I guess, yeah, seven fourths. Um, three is equal to 12 fourths. So when you subtract those, you get five fourths. When you multiply that by eight, you get 10. So this is it. Yeah. I, um, I like that quite a bit. Here's my guess. All right. And so again, the, uh, the rationale there, the logic that kind of led me there, I mean, I, I talked about it, but Basically thinking in terms of, well, we need to multiply some fraction because we couldn't use the integer values um, that, you know, the if we were to come up with a fraction that led to an integer, you know, after the division, um, we wouldn't be able to do that. And then trying to get to the 10, we need to multiply by some number and whatever that denominator is needs to, well, essentially cancel out. So we're probably going to be dealing with um, multiplying by some multiple of whatever that denominator is and four and eight lend themselves to that more and because we're trying to get a small number that's uh, what I decided to try first and it worked out well so cool you have to think of fractions to solve this one if you don't realize this early on this puzzle can really be a bear to solve yeah absolutely and not even that um, also improper fractions uh, which is which adds an extra level of complexity Yes, that's the way to do it. Of course, I would expect nothing less from you. Why, thank you, Leighton. All right, we got ourselves some land disputes to solve. Do give this puzzle a go. Hmm. Okay, 80 picarets. Four people are arguing with one another about how to divide up a large chunk of land they inherited. We want to divide things up nice and even. Each piece of property should have a well and a house and be exactly the same shape. Can you divide the property up according to their wishes and end the bickering? All right. So it has to have a well, a house, and be the exact same, exact same shape. So we're gonna be dealing with some funky shapes here. <laughs> that's the that's the first thing, um, because just looking at the distribution of the houses and wells, we're gonna we're gonna yeah we're gonna need some funky shapes, and it can't be a small shape either, like a square. It's gonna have to reach around in some odd manner. Hmm. The question is just, how much? One thing that's worth noting is they didn't say that the the house and the well need to be in the same positions within those shapes, but they do need to be in the same property shape. I think that's going to be key, um, because it's tempting to start building a property line around a house, but, but that doesn't necessarily need to be the starting point. So where to start. Um, 
At first glance, this upper right corner, this top middle area, seems the most restricted. Because if I'm going to group this yellow, or this orange house, with a well, I'm going to need to do so in a way um, that will probably be an odd shape in some manner, right? Like something like this. I guess also, I should do a quick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 6. Okay, so we're dealing with 36 squares and we need to... Oh, actually... Hmm... I'm gonna make the assumption they want to use all of the land they've provided. I'm gonna make that assumption. Um, but what I was gonna say is each property should be nine spaces in total. And that's quite a bit. So something else worth noting is this red house is quite far from most of the from most of the wells, right? And the one it does have access to, or the two it does have access to, require it to kind of make some weird diagonal-ish shape. So it won't so I feel like that'll be a restriction. Whereas in the lower left corner, for example, we're really quite free to do what we want. At first glance, hmm, I feel like this sort of shape would work well. Something like that, as nine squares and, and such. Um, but I think where we'll run into trouble is, well, immediately when we do that, <laughs> and that doesn't work. So that's a no-go. So then, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the assumption we have to use up all of the property. If that's not the case, we're gonna be we're gonna be traveling down the wrong path for quite a bit of time. Hopefully that's not the case. So basically this line, this property line here is really important because whatever contains this orange house, if it goes here, it severely limits whatever capability um, the red could have or access the red could have to um, a well. And more importantly, if we build this line right here, the red's only available well, I guess, within reason, is all the way at the bottom of the screen. And if we were to include the the yellow or the orange house in a shape that has only nine squares, it would need to go all the way down in order to mimic that shape and um, would obviously take up way too much space and it would cut off the, uh, the blue house from probably a well that it needs as well. So I don't think that's going to be the solution. So, um, so I think, again, we don't draw this here, <laughs> is basically what I'm trying to say. Unless there's some really funky stuff going on. Well, even now, because if, if it were anything, if this red house needed to get this well, right? And we're talking only nine, you know, tiles. There's not a lot of leeway there. It would have to be something like this. And that obviously excludes a lot of the territory. Actually, now that I mention it, for each... Okay, yeah, we do need to use up all of the property, just based on how they say each property needs to have exactly the same shape, and each property needs to um, have a well in the house. Just thinking in terms of, you need to divide up into four regions. Yeah, yeah, so I don't need to worry about that. But but basically what I'm saying is, um, if that were the case, that would be problematic. So this bit needs to go here. <laughs> I think that's the first thing we can say because this red one needs access to at least one of these wells. And I think the blue one is gonna ultimately access the uh, the lower left well. 
The question is, what shape? It's gonna have to take up quite a bit of this space to the left. Is it some sort of boot-like shape? No. Is it something like this? No. <laughs> um, darn, this is, this is tough. So from here, we need to encompass one of these wells. It has to be one of these two, because if we were to go for any of the others, we would use up, well, yeah, we would, or we would cut off the, the green one from getting access. So if it needs to encompass one of these wells, and only one of these wells, Hmm. It would have to, it could be something like this, and it would have to go like this. The question is where does it go from here? We've already used six, we need to encompass three more. And we need to not cut off the other house from doing anything. So it could be like this, or it could be like this, or it could be like this what would make sense what would fit well with other pieces of a similar i guess type um notably if it jut out like this at the end it would not be it would not fit itself well <laughs> so maybe something like this is more reasonable Yeah. Although... Ah, oh, darn. So this green one needs to... needs to have access. Um... Feeling close. <laughs> I'm feeling close. Interestingly... The red and blue set an interesting restriction on the building, right? And there needs to be some sort of zigzag to it. But it needs to do so in a way that it would still allow for a bulky segment like in the top right corner. So if I were to include something for the red property, it would need to have this little bit here, right? But then it would also need a segment that would, hmm. It's tough to not just like, I guess, draw shapes and then try to impose them on different parts of the, the property setup. Because I'm thinking, like, what about something like this, right? We wouldn't really be able to apply that to the, the orange house. I feel like instead we would need to do something like this. Or this, maybe? But then we're not ever going to use up that area to the left of the line I just drew. Something like that, maybe? Hmm. The thing is, <laughs> if we drew something like that, if you're try if you would try to use a shape like that in the top right corner, you would be excluding the well from the orange house. So instead, you would need something like this. But obviously that wouldn't work. Maybe something like that, no.
Interestingly enough... Hmm... Actually, I mean, that doesn't really serve any purpose to have those extra walls drawn, right? Yeah, this, um, this red house is imposing quite the restriction on the other houses. Hmm. Because it needs to include one of these. What if it takes this one? What if it takes this one instead? And then... Hmm... And I was gonna say, and it had a, I don't know, a segment over here that jutted out a bit. Hmm... I think something I want to do that would be helpful is draw a square and think, okay, how can I manipulate this so that I can then maybe like add on another square, somebody or somewhere like here, right? And just kind of manipulate this shape a little bit and take a look and see, or try to like mold this as I, you know, think about the different con conditions, right? So like in this top right corner, or rather, in the, the red house, we need to have at least one bend that goes like this and this. So that sort of shape, I guess like to the left of the, the north side of the red building, um, needs to exist. And in what we currently have drawn, it does not. So, how would we draw something that does? Um, it would need to have this component, right? And again, we're trying to add on one extra square now. So, we could do something like this. Would that work? Um, maybe, actually. Maybe. However, it wouldn't work the way we'd intended for red. Um, simply because if we were to use this shape for this, it would cut it like so. Like that, and that's obviously not what we want. However, we could obviously, um, well, could we include the shape in other rotations that would manage to include all of the things we, we need? Um, and the answer is going to be no. No, we won't. Um, yeah, I guess that's something we can tell, is it... Whatever the piece is, it can't have a longest side of six units, because in doing so, it would then eliminate the possibility of it, I guess, being present elsewhere, unless it's like a repeating unit. Um, but I think the well distribution, like, I guess, when I say unless it's like a repeating unit, I mean something like um, this, I guess. Although that's obviously not um, perfect, but something like this where it would fit well with itself. Or like this. Right? Um, that would be the same shape, and of course we would, you know, split it up accordingly. However, it's just due to how the houses and wells are arranged, I don't think something like that would fit unless it's some really odd shape. Or at the very least, nothing that's six wide. 
right? same time maybe something like like that obviously it doesn't include a house and a, uh, a well but maybe some shape related to that no I like the idea of looking more for what would fit in one of these it would have to be something like this but even then that's that's not gonna work what if I did something like that that's nine I'm trying to think I, I'm gonna need some sort of like three long arm at the end there to kind of fit around this segment. So if we were to repeat this shape in the top right corner, basically rotate it 90 degrees, what would we get? So we'd have our three long segment, then we have a one square, then we have two square segments high, and then we have two higher again, like so, I believe, except no, it actually goes around like that, right? No, that's totally not right. Um, let's just like pick a point on the line and then start to draw from there. So from here, I would go forward. Nope, come on. Forward and then left, left, forward, right, and then forward and then left, I think. I think that's the same shape. I think so. And I think that's actually going to do it. Oh, that's totally going to do it. Yeah. So if we draw it out again like this, that'll that'll totally do it. They're the same shape. Right? They all have 9. They all have 9. They all have the same shape. They all have a house and a well. And most of this came from the restrictions set by the red and knowing we needed nine and and then looking at, oh, if I take this well, I need that three long arm to hook around for the orange house. So then adding it onto that end of the, the red house's initial property and then seeing that it worked. Wow, so yeah, I think that's it. I think we did it, guys. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. <laughs> Awesome. Yes. Now we're over 5,110 picarats. Wow. That's correct. Finally, an end to the bickering. Dividing the land like that doesn't seem very sensible, but if it keeps the owners happy, you can't really complain, can you? <laughs> yeah, I can't say how convenient it would be, but it's, it's fair. Anyways, yes, that's the way to do it. Of course, I would expect nothing less from you. As you say, critical thinking is the key to success. <laughs> All right, Royal Escape. Do give this puzzle a go. This is the final puzzle in the game. Puzzle number 135, 99 Picarets. Oh, it's another one of these, no! I'm gonna be here all night. These are, this is a great type of puzzle. It truly is, um, and I do like them. But oh man, the last one took me a good 45 minutes to an hour, I think. So, this one, it's gonna be even more difficult. I am, I guess, I mean, I know it's going to be more difficult, but I'm glad to see more blue blocks as opposed to purple blocks, but wow. But look how few, yeah, those blue blocks replaced uh, quite a few of the green blocks we were dependent on before. Regardless, tired of leading a sheltered life, this princess is trying to escape her castle. Armed guards, however, are blocking her path. Slide the blocks out of the way to move the red one out the exit to the right. Her freedom depends on you. Can you do it? I knew it was gonna be one of these. And it's 99 picarets. I think the last one we did was 80 picarets. Oh boy. 
All right, so what is our first move? Um, in terms of first moves, we can either move these two middle green blocks to the right to free up the um, the purple block and then eventually the red block. However, that's going to lead to nothing because we can't move the blue blocks after having moved the red block. So instead, we're going to have to move one of these far right um, green blocks first and then move the blue block as a result and move the purple block and start to shift things around. So. Let's start with this. So we do that, we have to do this, and then presumably we're going to move this out of the way so that we can start to shift these blue blocks around. However, we've already run into our first game over. Um, you can see if we move the red block up, we can no longer move. So we'll start over <laughs> and we'll try again. Um, again, we need to do this. However, whatever we did before didn't work out so well. So instead, let's try and do something differently. Wow, there's so little flexibility because of how few green blocks we have. Um, so instead of... Well, what did we do last time? I moved that down, and then I brought the blue block down, and then the blue block to the right. Do I instead want to move both blue blocks over? I'm going to eventually need to stack them in some capacity. But I guess it can't be there. And again, I can't move that top left blue block to the right, because then moving the, the red block there is pointless. So instead, we've got we've to cycle things around on the right side so that we can, uh, we can bring some of the... Although, hmm, don't just want to create a symmetrical situation. Hmm... What do I want to do here? What do I want to do? We could shift the blue blocks so they're next to each other. Is that what we want to do? Or do we want to shift the other blue block all the way down to the bottom right? Then we could shift the the purple block to the top right. But again, we wouldn't really be able to do much with that, would we? So I think what I'm going to want to do is this. We'll start with this, and then we can do this. And because we have these green blocks here, once we actually move this, we'll be able to do something, I think. No, we still won't. Will we? We still won't. So, at the very least, this makes me appreciate that the first move of the red block is probably not going to be to the right. I need to evacuate the blue blocks before I can do anything else. So how can I best do that? best do that. It'll be tough. There's no doubt about that. I know this is a state I've already been at, but can I even bring the blue block out? I honestly don't. Well, I can if I do this. But the thing is, if I do that, <laughs> um, then we're kind of trapped. Yeah, this first, how do I move the red block first is going to be the first puzzle to unwind. Um, because I can't, so long as the blue blocks are in the top left and top, or in the in bottom left, I can't move the red block to the right. So I need to move those blocks out of the way first. 
Um, I need to evacuate them in some manner. However, if I do that, as I have in the past, um, I'm blocked by that purple block. So what I've been trying to think of is, how can I move these in such a way that that's not the case, I guess? <laughs> um, that there are green blocks on the side opposite of where the red block is going to move. And this is basically the starting position, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So how are we going to do that is the question. How can we cycle through these these blocks? We have to start by moving one of these. But even doing something like that's not all that helpful. Is it? No, it's not. So, let's see here. I think what I can do is bring both of the blue blocks to the center. And I think that's the first thing I'm going to try to do. Because I think the more of the green blocks I have, well... No, I have to move the purple block at some point. Because the purple block is, well, blocking things. Hmm. So we can do something like this, right? Then we bring these guys up. Now what? Now what? I can make enough space to move the red block, but every single time this purple block is going to prevent access. Hmm. So how do I shift the purple block to the right? That's the puzzle right now. We're starting. <laughs> We're starting to do so. So we have that all the way on the right now, which is nice. Which means we can lift this up. However, we now need to cycle through, and we don't have that flexibility. Although, we can actually move things now, after we do this. So maybe that's a victory in and of itself. <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll take what we can get, right? So now we need to free up that top right blue block. So how are we going to do that? We've got to move it to the right. Because I just don't think we're going to... Um, we can't move it down. So, the first thing we need to do is free up the purple block, like so. We can then move this to the right. However, however, before we move, we could move things to the point of making space to, for the red block to move to the right, but once we do that, um, we won't be able to fill that space it leaves behind. So we actually need to switch one of the blue blocks in the lower left with some green blocks. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Maybe... Maybe I do first need to mess around with, I guess, like, cycling through these. So, starting off by doing something like that. Hmm. How can I cycle through them? They just don't have the flexibility. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Um, 
I could bring something like that, but that'll just undo exactly the, the move we did at the very beginning, right? But maybe that's what I need to do. I need to take advantage of the space being like this so that I can shift things around <coughs> and introduce some of the green blocks into the cycle. Like so. Oh man, guys. <laughs> um, okay. So now we need to free up the red block to move. So we can bring this to the right. And we're able to move this. Gonna take a little sip of water. <laughs> okay. Progress. Then we need to bring these guys up and fill that space. The next question is, where do we go from here, right? Where do we go from here? I could move one of the blue blocks to the left to fill that space, or I can move one of them up to fill that space. Which do I want to do? If I move the left, or the lower block up, I can then move the green and the other green and blue to the left, bring the uh, the purple down, but that doesn't really allow me to do much because I'm not fully utilizing that space because things won't line up perfectly. So I think what I am going to do is this. I don't think that's particularly helpful either. I think I'm gonna need to move this that way so I can bring this down. Hmm. And then, okay. Oh man, each, each movement. <laughs> Each movement is a struggle. Hmm. I don't want to undo what I just did. But I'm not really seeing how to progress. After we've made so much progress. <laughs> yeah, hmm. But it's mostly just that, bl that blue block in the top right corner. It's proving really tough. Really inflexible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo what we did before. And see if we can work that around somehow. So what we should be able to do is something like this. I don't think that will immediately help per se. But now we'll have a different situation to work with. A less flexible situation. <laughs> so let's go back to the drawing board. From here... Hmm... tough is that I want to be able to move you know this one of these blue blocks to where the left green blocks are and then kind of slide in that top right blue block into where it was but I can't do that because of the red block hmm 
Hmm. If only the guards could escape to the right. <laughs> Let's see here. What if I try to open up a little bit of space like this? Because with the greens still here, they'll still have access after after we move things. But hmm, yeah, that's not that's not gonna work. No matter how you look at it. And now I don't really know how to get back <laughs> to where I was. This is where I was. Where do we proceed from here? over here for the time being so that I can shift both of these blocks to the right. We're not quite ready to, to move things around yet though. Because when they're in this orientation I can't get those green blocks on the left side. problematic. So let's try and get a little bit more creative. Very well may just be undoing what I had been doing. <laughs> that was, you know, what had been right. But, but for now, we need to get creative, so, so we will. Let's see if, she, if we can uh, shift things over like this. seem so. very similar to the situation I was in before. However, notably, nothing has changed, <laughs> has it? I'm pretty sure we're just back in the same situation we were before, where I bring this down, bring this to the right, go up like that, and there's nowhere to go. So that's another position that doesn't work for the, the purple block, of course. We can't have it there. Um, so where do we, where do we put it? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
This is still not oh. going to work. This purple block needs to be further to the right. But how can I get it there? I can't use the blue blocks, basically, to get it over there. Because whenever I move a blue block, it'll always create two open spaces that need to be, I guess, reshaped using the green blocks in order to make the free spaces vertical. Oh man, this is a tough one. Might need to uh, quiet down and really focus in. Not that I'm not, not <laughs> focusing really hard yet. I may even need to come back to it because it's starting to get late and I have to be at the hospital tomorrow. Hmm. I can get to this point. But from here, I just don't see... I don't see what to do. Oh man, this is... This is tough. This is a doozy. Oh, I need to go to sleep soon. I can get to this point where I've moved the red forward. And I feel like I need those greens behind it. But once I get here, there's not a lot I can really do. Um, it's, it's useless to just shuffle around the three blue blocks in the upper left corner. And, and ultimately what happens when I try to, I guess, move those around is I get to this point. Where I do this. But now I'm no longer to do any, able to do anything because I don't have enough. I, I guess I need more green blocks in that shuffle. But the thing is, if I remove them from behind the red block, there's nothing I can really replace them with until I already move the red block, which I can't right now. Um, I think the next movement I need to make with it is up towards the top of the screen, but because I can't really move that lower right block, I also can't move the blue blocks out of the way to free up that space. So honestly, I'm really, I'm stuck. Um, I don't see a way out from this position. So maybe I need to retrace and, and see if I can put myself in a different position than this one. Because I've been able to move down and then to the right. But maybe maybe there's a different series of steps to get out because from here I just don't see what there is to do because I can't get that blue out without moving the red up and because I can't get or I can't get that lower right blue out without moving the red up and because I can't get the lower right blue out I can't move the right purple either down or up to allow freedom to move in that second row. Enough, at least, to get out of the way of the, um, of the red square. Because the only place that, um, I, I mean, I need that far right column in order to make way for it to go up, but I, I can't. Um, because that lower right blue block is stuck. So I was thinking maybe if I had a top row of two... No, I mean, I can't... I can't do anything from this state. At least nothing I can see. But I really don't think there's anything possible here. So I think maybe I need to restart and aim for a different state. Maybe it's not down and then right. Yet at the same time, I feel like it has to be. <laughs> Hmm. 
because moving this to the right... I'll see if I can rotate some greens back there, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, I'm already... <laughs> I'm already out of luck. quite a bit to even get beyond this. At the very least, I don't have to worry about it being, you know, something I'm misinterpreting, right? The rules are very clear here. Helpful, is it? <laughs> oh, I thought, you know, if we had the greens on the left of the purple instead of the blues, we could shift the purple over. But, um, but as you can see, it's not quite as flexible a structure as I'd anticipated. Hmm. Every single time I get stuck at this position, where I have the red square here, and I just don't know how to make a next little pocket it can even move from because of that purple on the right and the, the blue in the lower right. Yeah, I just don't. I've sat here and I've tried so many different things, I've thought about it in so many different ways, just not seeing it. But at this point, it's been probably over an hour of sitting here trying to solve this. So I may say that we'll just come back to this another time. Um, I've surely cut out plenty of that time for you, so this won't <laughs> seem like as long of an episode as it has been for me. Um, I don't think I'll formally finish the episode here because we solved the other two relatively quickly, so this probably hasn't been that long of an actual edited episode. Um, but I, for one, need to take a break from this puzzle. However, I do like these. Um, these are really, really difficult. Um, they really force you to think, you know, multiple steps ahead and how you're working with, you know, the flexibility of the open gaps you have and how you can move certain pieces. Those blue blocks, man, those are, those are tough. Those are really making it difficult. Yeah, um, so I, I'm gonna have to call it for the night. I don't know what a hint would tell me in a puzzle like this. It would probably give me a, you know, first few moves or something like that. But I don't think I want a hint at the moment. So I am gonna struggle with this another night. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, from your guys' perspective, it'll just be a jump cut in a few seconds. But yep, I'm gonna call it for the night. So... I will, I'll take it, a, you know, another stab at it in a little bit. And you guys, I'm sure, will see me sounding different with probably a lot more energy in just a few seconds. Okay, I am back with, uh, with a fresh amount of energy and just clicked restart to try things again from the beginning and a little bit more positivity and hopefully we'll be able to solve it tonight. I've I spent a little about, or about an hour probably last time Trying to give this a go, and I'm ready to to give another hour. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't take that long, but but we'll see, right? I like always end up in this sort of position. It's either this purple block is in the center area here, such that whenever I do this, I end up stuck, or it's I guess to the right of the block. 
and it's preventing me from getting rid of one of the blue horizontal blocks. This is... this is really tough. I think I'm gonna try some sort of a different first approach. Maybe try to cycle some greens into one of the corners so I can move to the right with my first move, because I've been trying a lot with moving my red block up or down first, but I, I'm just not... I feel like I keep running into dead ends, and no matter how much I try, I'm not able to work around them. Um, so I feel like I'd rather try a different route at this point. Yeah. However, um, I actually don't think that's possible, because if I were to move the red piece to the right, I need to fill it in. I need to fill in the space behind it with greens, presumably, which would mean I need to cycle the greens into the the blues in the upper left corner. However, in order to do that, I need to take that blue out. And the only way I can do that is to have the red block then take up its space. So the first move must be I guess like either up or down because of the symmetry it doesn't matter so that I guess solidifies the opening set of moves but even then I'm not exactly happy with them so this is pretty different <clears throat> I think this is actually pretty different setup than I normally have. It will certainly pose its own challenges though. At first glance, this is what I need to do in order to move things. However, I need to shift things around to some degree. And I'm inevitably gonna have to bring this purple back into play. Which is going to be problematic in its own right, because yeah, this feels like the same position as before. Or I just end up bringing these greens over, like so. And then... Again, well, I guess I would want to shift these around. This is just, you know, a vertical flip of the previous situation, right? <sighs> so there's no way for me to get that purple into that upper left corner. Because in order to do so, I would need to clear out too much space. I just don't think the capacity is there. But at the same time, I need, I need greens to go behind the red block because I can't get the purple there. So I know I need access to those greens, like so. However, with the current setup, obviously, the purple block is proving to be quite the hassle. So I need something different there. I need access to more greens, actually. But I don't see a way to, to bring them up there. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Every time I try to add some sort of degree of flexibility, I end up taking it away from somewhere that needs it. As you guys can see in the top left corner, I made four greens, as I have in the past, with the intention of being able to say, oh, I can move this here like this, and then after doing so, I can actually move the purple. But then I get nothing meaningful out of that. So that can't be the uh, solution, obviously. 
But at the same time, if I only have two there, that can't be the solution. Yet, that purple block is, is stuck there. I have not been able to move it anywhere else. There were a couple times, well, I should say one other place, that also was a stuck position. So I don't know. I, um... I feel like I'm at my wit's end. I haven't used any hints, but honestly, I don't know how much a hint would be helpful in something like this, right? Like, this is all... Can you see the path? to get this out. Can you reason through it? I don't know if a hint would be that helpful. But I, I know I need to do something about that purple block. Because that is 100% the problem. It's not like I can rotate the blocks or anything silly like that. Not that that would even help in this case. I don't know, guys. I don't know, this... <laughs> it's always after this move that gets me stuck. Whether it's two green blocks or four green blocks, it's this purple that's in the way and I can't figure out how to get out of it. I think I'm gonna have to use a hint. I, um, I don't want to be spending hours on end trying to figure this out, and I really feel like I've, I've hit a stump. So, I've hit a stump. I'm hit, I've hit a dead end, or I'm stumped, but I've hit a stump. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't know, this part has me pinned pretty good. Keep trying to think it's got to be some sort of mid-ground type thing, but but that's not going to happen. So, I don't know guys. It seems like no matter what I do, this is the part that, that kills me. It would be a real shame to to not be able to solve the very last puzzle though. I mean, hopefully I can maybe the hints would get me past this part specifically, but I don't know. Alright guys, I'm gonna use a hint. Honestly, I don't think these hints will actually help me much, but I I feel like I've been recording for another 45 minutes or so, and um, yeah, I don't really want to spend that much more time on it, so this puzzle is difficult, but as long as you aren't repeating the same moves over and over, you'll eventually extricate the red block. Now stop depending on hints and go try it for yourself. What? Well, that was a non-hint. I, uh, I had to take a second. All of a sudden, there was a light bulb that was out. Then has been out for, for weeks, if not months. And all of a sudden, it just turned back on. <laughs> that was, um... Wow, that's, that's something, but... Believe me, believe me, game, I've been trying. This puzzle takes at least 81 moves. There aren't really any good hints to give, but here's a little trick that might help you. There are two open spaces in the box. As you slide pieces around, make sure you don't separate one open space from the other. Okay, I mean, that doesn't help at all. Um, but I mean, I guess, right, like, I wasn't expecting the hints to actually be helpful. State in hint one, you're just going to have to work this puzzle out yourself. However, it seems wrong to give you nothing for that hint coin you spent, so here's a factoid about the puzzle you're solving. In Japan, these types of puzzles have been around for hundreds of years. <laughs> Wow, so I finally came to try for the hint. It tells me nothing I don't already know. But I appreciate, I guess, the game's dedication to the final puzzle being something that you truly just have to solve for yourself.
I can appreciate that. Um, and we even get a little fact. Um, interesting fact about the word factoid, it doesn't mean little fact or tiny little fact. Um, the, the suffix oid actually means like pseudo or fake. So factoid actually means something that appears to be a fact but is not indeed a fact. It's a false statement. However, colloquially, it's starting to get used kind of like a, a little fact meaning, which um, I guess as of 2007, it was al already uh, utilizing that definition enough to make it itself into Professor Layton in the Curious Village, but wow. So that was not helpful at all. <laughs> and I'm still stuck at this part. <sighs> um, it takes at least 81 moves, at least. I guess that's like the only really valuable hint we got. This like opening is the only thing I can relatively consistently do. Even then, even then I don't feel too confident in it. This is different. This is different. So I've been, I've really, and I mean really, tried to focus on getting that purple block as far as I could to the right, but I also, well, no, I'm going to end up in the same pinned position I, I usually am, or at least was before, where I'm going to be able to move this forward now, but once I do, I have this, this pin here, where I can't move that. Maybe... Maybe this is the solution? Hmm. This is the other position I get stuck in. And then we can do that to bring this over to make way. Okay, now I think we're talking. Now I think we're talking. Now I think we stopped talking. <laughs> Darn it. This is a no good state either. Because now I can't get that purple over to the right. Can I? Darn it, I was so excited. I don't even remember what I did. I think it had to be like that. Or any way hmm. to get the greens on the left side. Is that possible? I mean, I guess we'll try it. Hmm, I don't think so. Could do something like this, but I don't think that's what I want to do. Or is it? I've essentially rearranged the whole diagram. didn't actually help all that much. 
I feel like I'm in a similar situation to before. same sort of situation just on the other side oh man got a new configuration and everything but was not able to take advantage of it um we can bring this up is that progress have i done that before i don't think so was it just not obvious before I don't think so, because now we're getting really close. What? Holy cow, are we... are we gonna do it? Oh my goodness! We're totally gonna do it! Oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh no! Oh no! We're so close! We're so close! We're so close! Oh, man! Let's see if I can cycle that purple block to the left. Or maybe I need to bring it back to the center. Like so. Wait, I don't want to go backwards though. Now I feel like I'm moving backwards. Yeah, I feel like I just undid everything. Because now I'm just back here. Hmm. And this is a no-go situation. No matter what I do, I won't be able to create a very meaningful block, will I? Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna take it back. I need more... What do I need more of? Oh man, 
guys, we're so close. I don't even remember how I had it in that top right corner. these around like this I think that might be the key here up so I can bring this over but I'm still stuck oh and I have all the greens available in the front too um dang block how do I get rid of it guys to rotate these blocks around the red block. Which means I'm going to need to... Hmm. So I'm trying to work away of how to get this upper right purple block around the top side of the red box. And I'm thinking in terms of where I need to make gaps. And the tough part is that I need to make a gap by moving something to the left. Two things to the left, actually. And the tough thing is that's kind of impossible right now with these blue blocks there. But if I had some greens up there, if I had, if I had four greens in the top left corner, what could I do? I could move those blue blocks one to the left and then shift the purple block one to the left and have two of the greens. And then I could have two of the greens in the lower right corner fill that space, and then I think we would be in a good spot. We may may even be home free. But I don't see a consistent way of getting two greens in the top left corner and then two greens in the bottom right corner 
with the two blues next to the purple. Basically, how do I switch those two greens on the left and the two blues on the top left? More so than anything, it makes me think I'm gonna have to undo certain moves. Even now, I'm not really rotating things, right? Now I could try to cycle them in, I think. for I think we're there. Oh my goodness, I think we're there. Oh, we're so there. Yes! Oh my goodness. Oh. I was like, I realized, I, you know what? It reminded me so much of a Rubik's Cube at the end, where it's like you make one step forward, but then you have to take a step backward to rearrange things for how you want the next step to go. And, and so forth. And we finally arranged the greens so that we had them on both sides of the, on the top and the bottom of the red square. And we're finally able to cycle that purple around it, utilizing those free green blocks. Wonderful, this is a classic example of a slide puzzle. Oh my goodness, guys, we did it. We did it. Yes, that's the way to do it, of course. I would expect nothing less from you. That took me a good couple hours. Wow. And with this, it seems that you have completed every puzzle in the game. Congratulations. You possess an aptitude and passion for puzzle solving that is equal to my own. I encourage you to continue to sharpen your skills with new weekly puzzles available via Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Oh my goodness, we did it. <laughs> we did it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I'm so proud. That was... That was really tough. I, I, maybe it's just me, but I really had to bend my brain to get around that. And I hope you guys weren't banging your heads against the walls watching me as I went insane trying to do that. Oh my goodness. 
Whew. So with that, we've completed every challenge puzzle and every puzzle in the game. There are weekly puzzles. I, I guess let me know if there's any way to access what those were, if an archive or something like that. Otherwise, oh man, I guess now is when I want to talk about it. My favorite puzzles from this game were definitely some of the last ones. I loved Finish the Equation. The Royal Escape was tough. I don't know if I love it as much, but it was solid. The Too Many Queens 5 was excellent. Um, oh god, Princess in a Box. Um, Perimeter Perplexer was cool, but not too crazy. Four Balls was really fun. Um, and I think Number Lock. Number Lock was also really cool. That was another one of my favorites. And then, from earlier in the game, the Stamp Puzzle was really, really fun. Where you had the different types of stamps that you needed to group together. I would say those are probably my favorite puzzles from the game. Yeah, th those would probably be my favorites. Just in terms of their complexity, the logical deduction necessary to get through it, and um, yeah, the, the way that you can actually, you can reliably get from the start to the end through logical deduction, and the kind of twists and turns it takes to get there, the different perspectives, and oh man, so good, so good. Um, I really, really enjoy the puzzles. 135 puzzles, and like I said, really only maybe six or seven I didn't like um, that were frustrating because maybe, I don't know, either they, in my opinion, weren't great puzzles or they weren't very clear about their instructions or um, had ambiguous statements that were necessary to interpret correctly for the sake of solving the puzzle, but overall, man, these, whew, these were some solid puzzles, especially towards the end with these challenging ones. Uh, they really, really pushed me to my limit. But, anyways, there's a top secret segment where we can access this hidden door. Supposedly, if you have a copy of the next game in the series, which is the Diabolical Box, you can enter a password here to open it up. However, I looked into it briefly because I'm playing this on an emulator. I do own a copy of both this game and um, the Diabolical Box, but I don't know exactly how it works. Um, Except that it requires a sort of um, DS hardware file from both of them in order to unlock it. And the password changes for each game and you need to have already, you know, created a save file. But it's like locked in your DS hardware somehow or tied to it. And that is obviously very difficult for me on an emulator. So I think what I'm going to try and do is see if there's a code or something I can do to unlock this um, with some tampering. <laughs> And, and we'll see how that goes. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, let's see if this works. I used a code that I found on the internet. And it was successful! So, um, for those of you that are curious, I'll... I can say more about it in the Discord if you have any questions about how to do this for yourself on an emulator. But, basically, we have now entered the hidden door. You can see my actual secret code there. 6G7B4G7E. Naluk says, This is the part of our production where we finally show you how we came to be. Hurrah! Indeed. From here, you can take a peek into the process of how we went from the page to the screen. It's only a fraction of the material created for the game, but we do so hope you enjoy it. Presenting concept art from Professor Layton in the Curious Village. Ooh... Concept art for Layton. Oh, these are all different forms of Layton. Wow, so the one in the lower right obviously looks the most similar to the final product, but it's hard to imagine that one in the top right was Layton at some point. Wow, and then the, the guy in the middle, right? I love that guy in the middle with the kind of, you know, almost like googly eyes. He looks like he has so much personality. And is that a bird with him? Interesting. And then in the top left, looks so... a little bit more like Holmes invested, you know, Sherlock Holmes, um, just with the attire. But I love the, I love what they ended up with. Now, what's up next? Luke. Wow. What's interesting is despite, you know, the designs differing quite a bit, you can still see the fundamental art style that carries over into all of the other characters, right? But, wow, I, I like what they ended up with. Um, the one on the far right looks kind of derpy in my opinion. As does the one in the, the top left. Although he looks like he would be an absolute pain to be with. He looks like that guy who corrects you all the time. I like the, the one in the middle, towards the top, that has that little tuft of hair. 
But I, I do think at the end of the day, what they ended up choosing was probably the best. Wow, really neat. So that's Luke. Reinhold's family. Wow, so... Is that supposed to be... <laughs> I almost said Matthew, guys. I almost said Matthew. I don't know which of them is supposed to be Brandon slash Matthew, but I think... Oh, it's probably that more butler-looking character. Um, there's obviously Claudia with uh, Dahlia, and then over on the far right is Simon, but it's tough to say between the middle three who would be who, actually. I feel like the, the taller guy with the puffed out chest is probably the, the butler, and maybe in the very bottom, centered, he looks like a little bit more authoritative, would probably be Baron Reinhold himself, potentially. In the top right. Oh, that's the, um, that's Gordon, I think? Gordon, the guy who's always looking for bachelorettes? <laughs> wow, what characters. Oh, and then they have the, the Leighton Mobile. It's officially called the Leighton Mobile. How lovely. I like the, the end result a little bit more in, uh, obviously, the game itself. It has a little bit more color that I think adds to it. But, wow, I like the, the framing and everything. I love concept art. This is such a great bonus. Oh, Flora and Bruno. Flora and Bruno. Oh my goodness, that's supposed to be Bruno. He looks so different. The facial hair. Look at the facial hair. He reminds me of a mix of like, I don't know, the, what is his name? Like, Groucho or something from uh, the, the garbage guy from Sesame Street mixed with like Ganondorf. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. And then Flora. I'm trying to remember. Oh, Flora, of course. Oh, that's probably what she would have looked like before she reveals her face to you. Ooh, she almost looks scary like that. And she would look a lot bigger and older, probably to hide her body frame, maybe. Um, but I'm, I'm glad they ended up, even if it was obvious that it was Flora when we saw her, while she was trying to act disguised, um, that they ended up using the design they did. And then we've got Saint Mystere. I always, I realize I said Saint Mystere throughout like the whole playthrough, but then Leighton corrected me in the final cutscene to say Saint Mystere. But that's, um, that's really neat. I really like how it looks, um, how the street design and everything. They have, you know, all the different uh, villagers. This actually, it's probably simply coincidence, but it kind of reminds me of um, the UK. I spent one summer in Cambridge, and this reminds me of kind of like the narrow, twisty, roads that I uh, would walk down while I was there. Wow. I really like the art. Concept art is such a great bonus for people that complete a game. And oh my goodness, Leighton's figure! <laughs> I love it! Look at it! Is, I'm sure, there, is there like a Nendoroid of this out there somewhere? This has to exist. Somebody has to have made one of these. I would love to have one of these on my desk. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. I love it. I love it. And then we got Leighton and Luke. Ooh, you can see, so remember the very first uh, concept art of Leighton, the one in the top left kind of had a similar type of coat. You can see the the influence in the final design here. And then of course, Luke, you know, reaching from behind as Leighton looks inquisitively towards the future after, you know, reading some paper or a map or whatever it may be, leading the way while Luke curiously overlooks. Maybe not so critically thinking about it though, but as we know, Leighton would say, critical thinking is the key to success. And that is the end. We'd sure like to show you more, but sadly this is all we have for you this time. We look forward to seeing you at the next adventure in the Professor Layton series. For the sake of completeness, I started reading some of these profiles afterwards, and they're actually really funny, so I think they'd actually be meaningful to include in the video. So, probably without any sort of introduction, I'm going to edit this into the last bonus episode, and it'll seem awkward when I mention doing this after this episode, later on in the episode. But, you know what? Here we are, fitting this in the episode, and I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> These profiles are really funny. So, first off, we have Professor Layton, an unabashed puzzle fanatic, Herschel Layton's skill for cracking the toughest riddles has put his name in the papers many times. His trademark top hat fits him so well you'd swear that it was part of his body. I wonder if he sleeps with it. It would be very inconvenient. Luke, as the self-proclaimed apprentice, self-proclaimed <laughs> apprentice of Professor Layton, Luke follows his teacher everywhere, but he still has much to do, or much to learn, before he can call be called a puzzle master. Besides puzzles, Luke is also a huge animal lover. Now we've got Franco. 
he works the drawbridge that links St. Mystere to the outside world. As Franco's portly form might suggest, though, he often ducks out of work to loaf at the town restaurant. Admittedly, though, not like that work would really keep him out of that body habitus, right? <laughs> Next up, Stashin. Ah yes, the mysterious Mr. Stash and Scarfin. In a town full of mysteries, few stand out as Class A enigmas the way this mustached man does. Where did he come from, and where is he going? That no one can say. I love this one. This has got to be one of my favorites. I actually only, I only read like ten or so of them, so... Alright, Ingrid. Flora's robot nanny looks like a sweet older lady, and as she can't recall names for the life of her, she acts the part quite well. She enjoys baking and is considered a true pie artisan for those in the know. Percy, this aspiring writer, is constantly searching for new inspiration. Though he's never actually completed a piece of writing, he remains undaunted. His current plan is to novelize Lightning in Luke's adventures, though he's never completed a piece of writing. Is he like one of those writers that has excellent ideas, starts to draft things, can picture in their heads, but once they actually, you know, put the pen to the paper, never actually completes the, the book? I, uh, obviously writers deal with that, but really people deal with that in projects of any sort. But I, 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 was, I was reading these and I was like, oh my goodness, these have so much character and such little humor and, you know, the personality of the game injected into these descriptions that they're entertaining enough to include. So here we are. Marco, this uncouth fellow, has the unfortunate habit of answering his own questions when he talks. He's usually so busy with this that he doesn't listen to what anyone has to say. Ironically, he also hates being ignored. <laughs> he wants people to listen to himself, talk to himself. Raymond. Though employed by the Reinhold family, Raymond prefers pe playing hooky at the town restaurant to actually working. Most people in the town know Raymond as that man with the creepy purple lips. Pretty fitting. Matthew. Did I... I swear I called him Brandon earlier. The oldest of Bruto's robots. The oldest. Interesting. Matthew has faithfully served the Reinholds as their butler for many years. Perhaps because of his kind and mild nature, however, he often gets the brunt of Lady Dahlia's bossiness. Dahlia. Lady Dahlia is a robot created to be the mirror image of Flora's mother, Violet. She's bossy and haughty, but she also has a hidden sweetness that shows itself when she deals with Flora. Aww. And next up, we got Gordon. Though wealthy, Gordon is extremely preoccupied with his finances. Maybe it's because of his frugal nature that he just can't seem to attract many interested ladies. Something else he frets about constantly. Ain't that the truth? Aww, poor guy's sweating plenty. Alright, Simon, needing maintenance, Simon collapses, leading all to believe that he's been murdered. Don Paolo finds his body and hides it. However, or later, however, Bruno finds Simon and restores him to working order. Oh, well that's the, the happy ending we needed to hear about Simon, right? Claudia, this fluffy little cat may have a delicate name, but the shocking truth is that she is actually a he. He usually stays close to Dahlia, but he is known to slip away and tear up the fish, tear up the fish stand to relieve a little stress. Huh, that's pretty interesting. Alright. Deke is the tall fellow by the clock tower. He's known as St. Mystere's biggest person, as well as its biggest chicken. He'd like to climb the clock tower, but his acrophobia keeps him from anywhere above the ground level. That's pretty funny. I wonder who was in charge of, you know, designing all of these characters, right? Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice manages the town's only inn. She's a kind lady, but she tends to fall head over heels for every man she meets. She claims she's outgrown her wild man chasing, but robots don't really grow. Mothers, hide your sons! <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Agnes. Agnes can predict the future, but her fortunes are so full of gloom and doom that all try to avoid her. Anyone who bumps into her is forced to listen to her litany of grim prognostications. Oh, that's unfortunate. Polly. Polly can often be seen outside the restaurant, fists raised high in the air. Now and then he runs out of steam, but for the most part he's a regular volcano. <laughs> Doesn't look the part in the picture, though. Crouton is the owner of the town restaurant and is renowned for both his kindness and his heavenly pudding. Stay away from his scones, though. They are like dry sponges. He's also Crumb's brother. Huh, fitting. Although, do we know who Crumb is? Hmm. Flick. Flick is a regular patron of the town restaurant and is nuts about coins. He looks like a teenager, but he's actually 28 years old and married. Though, no one has ever seen his wife. <laughs> That's a little, little suspect. Um, Rodney. Uptight and by the book, Rodney runs the town hall. He often tries to weasel out of work by strongly advising people to do things without his help. He loves forms so much, it's rumored that he sleeps on them. <laughs> so funny. Chummy, a member of the police force, Inspector Chummy is uncompromising and stubborn. While short-tempered, his skill as a lawman is unrivaled, and he's feared by criminals all over the London area. Lucy, in a village filled with oddballs, Lucy stands out for how normal she is. <laughs> the oddball amongst oddballs. Archibald's attempts to spoil her... 
Oh, despite her grandfather Archibald's attempts to spoil her, she remains mature, honest, and smart as a whip. Zapone claims to be a detective and is elated to meet a fellow sleuth like Layton. He also claims to have the inside scoop, but he's really just clueless. What was Bruno thinking when he built this oddball? <laughs> Gerard is a timid old man who has trouble deciding just about everything. He loves raising flowers and can often be found in the garden tending to his flower beds after one of Claudia's wild, destructive romps. Aww. Jarvis sits high on a hill in the village, pondering all manner of deep and important thoughts. He knows much about the town, but he's too preoccupied with his own thoughts to share them. He is friends with Raymond. He's got such a big face. <laughs> Adria. This girl always seems to be laughing at someone. Some say Adria inherited her cruel sense of humor from her grandmother, Agnes. Oddly enough, Adria is good friends with Lucy, who is as kind as they come. She's like the... She's like the Mona Lisa of laughing at you. <laughs> it's like, I'm kind of shifting side to side. And no matter where you move, she's staring at you. <laughs> Laughing at you. Pavel, or Pavel, intrepid adventurer that he is, Pavel has the most unfortunate sense of direction. He had planned to make his way to America, but ended up in St. Mister somehow. The real mystery is how he travels so lightly. <laughs> Crumb, ah, this is Crumb. Crumb manages the town cafe. While his bulk and stature might suggest otherwise, he's a big softie on the inside and loves small animals. He's Crouton's brother. We only saw him, like, once, I think. <clears throat> Prosciutto. Lives on the north side of town and is known for his appetite. He's never seen without a snack in hand and is known as Prosciutto the Pantry. <laughs> his favorite pastime is buying all the sausage in the market. That's, a uh, can't imagine this very healthy, but for a robot, I can't say I, uh, have much room to criticize. Archibald was originally created to be a friend for the Baron. The Baron was so close to him that he left him his desk, which contains a clue to finding the golden apple. The apple of his eye is his granddaughter, Lucy. Aw. All right, Sylvain, or Sylvan. As park steward, Sylvan used to keep the park in top shape, but when people stopped visiting, he decided to close it up. However, the upside of that is he gets to enjoy the rides without having to wait in line. <laughs> I'm sure he's just out there doing his own thing all the time. Martha, a lover of card games, Martha sometimes spends entire days holed up in her house, polishing and shuffling her cards. Her favorite pastime is challenging, unsuspecting people to a rousing round of 52 pickup. Oh. That's, uh, not exactly rousing. Giuseppe, as the town's butcher, Giuseppe's steaks are top-notch, but he's best known for his cringe-worthy jokes and puns. His sense of humor is said to have come from his creator, Bruno. <laughs> I can appreciate it. Also, look at that mustache! <laughs> look at that mustache! Alright, Reinhold. The late Baron Reinhold created St. Mystere and all its inhabitants for his daughter, Flora. His love for Fleur was so great, he devised an elaborate scheme to ensure that she wouldn't be alone after his death. Makes him a true puzzle master himself, does it not? Leighton's car, the Leighton Mobile. Spor <laughs> the Leighton Mobile sports an unusually high ceiling that lets the professor take to the road without removing his top hat. <laughs> Thanks to his careful maintenance, the car is always in tip-top shape. I love that. I love that they added that little characteristic to it. Flora. Flora rigged up this disguise so she could sink or slink around town without being noticed. Just about any of the townsfolk can see through the disguise with a glance, but she's convinced that she is incognito. <laughs> Granny R. Granny Riddleton has the uncanny ability to find puzzles that Leighton and Luke overlooked on their adventure. She sports a fairy godmother-like style and is further proof of Bruno's bizarre sense of humor. I definitely get that vibe, so I think that's a really well done character design. Don Paolo. The criminal mastermind who poses as Inspector Chelney, Don Paolo is renowned as a scientist of the highest order and views himself as Leighton's rival. When he's not plotting evil, Don Paolo also enjoys playing music. He's quite the scientist himself. Look forward to seeing him in the future. Bruno. Bruno is St. Mystere's caretaker. He served Baron Reinhold for years and is a skilled technician who built all the robots in the village with his own two hands. Ah oh, man, I love Bruno's design. Then, finally, Flora. The only daughter of a vastly wealthy family, Flora is the mysterious girl who has been running around the village. She lost her mother as a small child and was raised by her father, Baron Aug Augustus Reinhold. And there you have it. Those are all of the character profiles. I really like them. They're, they add a lot of personality. And now I guess back to my original commentary. Wow. Wow. Okay. And with that, we have... We have completed... Professor Layton in the Curious Village. 
Um, again, I mean, after five bonus episodes now, um, I can definitively say I, I thoroughly love this game. I maintain all of the wonderful feelings I had from before the end of the game, and what I said when initially looking through the credits. But now, even more so, with those challenge puzzles, and the true challenge they brought, the, the true culmination of so many skills, a couple aside, um, from throughout the game, I really, really enjoyed. And then, of course, the included bonus of the concept art, right? Uh, behind the Hidden Door is such an excellent bonus and such a fun little thing for somebody who cares enough, who's truly a fan that would appreciate such concept art. Excellent bonus. Excellent, excellent bonus. So, I think with that, I'll say I do intend to play the next Professor Layton game, uh, The Diabolical Box. This game... I want to thank you guys so much for the success in terms of the attention, the, the views, the passion by you guys for this game. Um, I mean, I'm not like a huge YouTuber and I don't judge success solely by views, but, but by how much people are enjoying both the game and my playthrough of said game. And then of course, all of the community, the discussion, the comments that come with it. Um, you know, if both you are enjoying, or both you and me are happy with this playthrough, whether that's me playing through the game me enjoying your responses to the game, and then you guys enjoying my struggles, my successes, my triumphs, uh, my reactions, and you also having the opportunity to relive parts of the game yourself, or maybe refresh on some of the puzzles, or whatever it may be. Um, if we're all having a good time, that's a great sign to me, and I think this game was exactly that. So I definitely want to do more of Professor Late in the future, and I... I can, pr I can promise the Diabolical Box. I don't know when it'll be. I'll probably take a little bit of a break from Layton. I don't like to get burnt out on a particular series. So it may be a few months. It may be a year. Um, we'll see when I get back in that puzzly mood. We'll see when life allows me to jump into it. But I love this game. And I know from here on out that I will be... I'll be a Layton fan for life. <laughs> and I hope you guys... Whenever I get around to the Diabolical Box or whatever next game it may be... Uh, join me for that journey and I hope you guys join me for other journeys as well if you like this game I'd imagine you'd like uh, Portal games in that they're you know excellent puzzle solving games as well You may like the Danganronpa games for their mystery elements and their characters that have incredible personalities backstories and are truly um, excellently done characters in my opinion You may like some of the other series I've done I've done a variety of things ranging from visual novels to horror, um, like Corpse Party, and really difficult platformers, puzzle platformers, you know, Celeste, uh, Super Meat Boy, etc. So I do encourage you, if you enjoyed this, to subscribe and stick around for future series. And maybe, hey, if you're looking for something in the meantime, uh, stick around and, and see if there's anything else on the channel you'd like. I know it would, it would mean a lot to me as well. But Anyways, thank you guys again so much for your support throughout the series. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end through the entirety of the series and these bonus episodes, through every last puzzle and every bit of extra content this game has to offer. Um, thank you so much. I think on my own time I'll go through the portraits or whatever extra bonus content, but I won't, I won't bore you guys with that content. So, until the next series of mine, the next video of mine, which... Ever it may be that you guys decide to watch, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.